Here's how you can make this terminal in less than 10 minutes with features like customizable prompt, interactive autocomplete, syntax highlighting, and Git integration. This video is super beginner friendly and the total configuration is less than 40 lines. Let's get started. Before we get started with the actual configuration, I want to clear up the terms shell and terminal. Although they are closely related, they are actually distinct programs on your computer. First, a shell is a computer program that exposes an operating system's services to a human user or other programs. In other words, a shell is a type of program that lets the user interact with the computer. Bash and Zshell are examples of CLI shell programs. They take in your commands in the form of text, then executes it. Now, in order to actually send these commands to your shell, you will need a terminal. A terminal, or a terminal emulator as some people like to call it, is the program that you type into, which then sends your command to the shell. Here is a typical command. First, I'll type it into terminal. Once I press enter, the terminal will send this command to the shell. Once the shell is done executing the command, it will send the output back to the terminal. Remember, the terminal and shell are separate programs, but you will need both to actually use your computer. This is important to understand because some configuration happen here at the shell level, while others happen here at the terminal. For example, if I change the font that the terminal uses, the shell is unaffected. And vice versa, if I add an alias in the shell, the terminal is unaffected. This is because changing the font only affects how the terminal renders text to your screen and doesn't affect any underlying shell behavior. On the other hand, adding aliases does change shell behavior by changing the way it interprets your commands. I'll get into how aliases work later in the video. With that out of the way, let's get started with the actual configuration. If you haven't already, you'll need to install Zshell and make it your default shell. On macOS, Zshell is installed by default. However, on other systems, you may need to install Zshell yourself. You can also check what shell you're using by using this command. Zshell configuration starts in a file named .zshrc in your home directory. If this file already exists, make a backup of this file with this command. If this file does not yet exist, you can create it. This file can be thought of as a startup script for Zshell. Whenever a new shell environment is created, this script is executed. We can include a series of commands in this file to achieve our desired configuration. To demonstrate this, you can add this echo command to your new .zshrc file. All this command does is print hello world to the terminal. Now when you open a new terminal window, you will notice a hello world being printed before the prompt. You will be installing three plugins, ZSH Syntax Highlighting, ZSH Autocomplete, and P10K. To get started, create a directory named Zshell Plugins. Now cd into this directory and clone the following repos. Now when I clone these repos, I recommend using a def equals one flag because these repos contain a lot of stuff that you don't need. If you don't use this def equals one flag, it's not going to break your configuration, but you're just going to be downloading a lot of stuff that you don't need. So I'll do the same for the other plugins that we will be using. Now that we have our plugins downloaded, we can actually enable them using our zshrc file. Add these lines to enable autocomplete and syntax highlighting. Do not yet enable P10K as that requires additional configuration. Now save your changes to ZSHRC and open a new terminal. Your prompt will now have an autocomplete menu that you can navigate with your arrow keys and syntax highlighting. Now with these two plugins alone, our shell is pretty good, but if you want to make things look a bit nicer, we can use P10K to create a custom prompt. This plugin requires the use of a nerd font. A nerd font is just a font that includes some extra icons that are used as decorations in the terminal. So before you actually enable this plugin, change your terminal font to a nerd font that can be found on nerdfonts.com. Now that we have our font installed and enabled, we can enable our P10K plugin in the same way that we have enabled all our other plugins. If your terminal looks something like this, it means that you have not enabled the correct nerd font. Check your font settings again and make sure you are using a nerd font. What is really nice about this plugin is that it has its own configuration wizard. Go through this process and pick your own preferences. These settings are saved in a file called .p10k.zsh in your home directory. 
If you want my exact configuration, replace your P10K ZSH file with mine, which can be found in the description. Once you reach the page asking about instant prompt, I recommend enabling it, then applying these changes to your ZSHRC file. Your ZSHRC file should now look something like this. I recommend moving the lines around so that the commands for each plugin are grouped together. Quick side note, the order in which you load your plugins actually does matter. So I would recommend loading P10K first since that's the prompt and should be the first thing that you see. And ZSH syntax highlighting should be last. If you were to install any other plugins, it would go somewhere in between these two. Here are some more configurations you can add to your ZSHRC file. This line gives the autocomplete menu some color. We can improve our command history features with the following configurations. These three lines explicitly state where our command history is stored. That way we always know where our history is. These lines work together to prevent duplicate commands from being saved to our history. This line allows you to prevent a command from being saved to the history by adding a space in front. I rarely use this feature, but it does come in handy every once in a while. These two lines bind Ctrl P and N to the history search because I'm too lazy to move my hands to the arrow keys. An alias is a tool we can use in shell environments to rename commands. A common one is this. This makes it so that every time you call ls, you're actually calling ls dash dash color. Aliases can also be used to make long commands shorter. This way you can reduce the amount of keystrokes needed for commands you use often. You can put these aliases in your zshrc file to make it so that they're present every single time you open a new terminal. Configuring the color scheme happens at the terminal and will vary for the different emulators that you use. Some emulators can make changing the color scheme kind of difficult, so for now I just recommend changing the colors manually until you achieve your desired color scheme. I will make a video in the future covering the different terminal emulators that are available. I hope you found this video helpful. If you still have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Um, peace!